So I'll just continue interviewing guests. So the next up is a guy from Montenegro, and he's as true Montenegrin as there can be. He comes from the royal capital, Cetinje, because yesterday there was a lot of talk about how there are no entrepreneurs from Montenegro, where here comes one. And one thing that really struck me the most that he told me yesterday is that, look, Vanya, I'm sick and tired of working with supermodels. And I was like, really? No, really? He's a huge Apple fanboy, and seems to me that I'm always stuck with Apple fanboys here on stage. He's a co-founder of Fleka, the makers of popular app Mosquito, and give it up for my second guest, Miloš Milošević. Morning, everyone. Hi, Milos. Before we go into more serious things, let me first ask you about this one. What did you really mean when you said you're sick and tired of working with supermodels? Well, this was a little bit of a misinterpretation. Um, I guess I was actually you... quoting you, man. <laughs> I guess you were trying to wake up the guys. Um, yeah, actually, my first work in Milan when I I lived there for uh, six years um, basically was. Um, retouching the photos of supermodels. Um, I'm one of the responsible guys for making female uh, models look uh, totally differently than what they actually are um, when they come into Photoshop. And um, it, it's, it's really a disaster when they come in. So uh, we need to polish many things uh, before they go out in, uh, in advertising. So you completed your education in Italy? So why the hell did you return to Montenegro? I get this question uh, quite often. Um, I have been living in Italy for, as I said, for six years. I studied there. I graduated in digital design and um, started a company there. And um, in 2008, I decided to go back uh, to Montenegro. I think... Um, it's a, it's a great country with a very good possibility of uh, starting a uh, business. And at the moment, we are operating actually both in Italy and Montenegro. And um, I never look back to this decision. Actually, I'm very, very happy that uh, I'm here. We're so glad to have you here. And I know for a fact that you had really great job offers from the corporate sector. So why did you pass on those? Yes, actually... Um, Obviously, I, I have been working as a freelance after these photo retouching things. I uh, somehow got into the um, business of fashion, obviously, in Milan. And um, let's say that uh, basically I have had uh, a pleasure of working for very many big brands uh, and had offers of um, staying there, obviously working for them. But um, my idea was a little bit different. I wanted to create my own thing. Uh, Together a team together with a colleague of mine, and that's how it all started. Uh, I, I think that I, from the very beginning, I actually wanted to create something myself rather than work for someone else uh, in a big corporate sector. What is the thing that led you to Mosquito? Was it the grand vision you had? What was it? Was it that you just couldn't stand one one control freak in a corporate sector? Was oh. it that you would like to make a dent in the universe? No, the thing was uh, with Mosquito, actually, with, for, all, for all of you who don't know, um, this is uh, a location-based service that actually uh, covers events and places. And um, the idea was actually when coming back to Montenegro, uh, we actually, as, a, as the government wants to say, we are uh, publicizing this country as a tourist destination, but lacking uh, tourist services uh, big time. So it, it, was, uh, it really struck me because I had so many people coming over to Montenegro, uh, exploring the country, but then as soon as you would leave their hand, you know, like, and not 
led them on their own in this wildness of Montenegro, they would kind of get lost and uh, couldn't experience the country um, on, on their own. And this was really a problem uh, that I saw. In, on the other hand, uh, there was also a problem of local people not being treated in a normal way from tourist organizations. They were thinking only about foreigners and not about uh, local people and providing local content for them. So this was a starting point that got into mapping uh, because Montenegro was also a, a gray spot on, on Google Maps and this was the first problem that we had to face. Uh, and then obviously going on foot and covering all the places of interest because Foursquare wasn't there and we uh, believed that some more data was actually uh, required rather than uh, just putting in the coordinates in a category. Okay. My offer for the mic still stands, so whenever you want to pose the question, just do it. And you mentioned that your original vision for the Mosquito differs from what it is today. Why did you pivot? Uh, well, when I came in, I think that the, with my design background, the first idea was actually to make some sort of a printed, only a printed tourist guide and, and use a CMS or a service online that actually serves only as, as a database. But as the things were invo uh, evolving, obviously in the, in the um, let's say, sector of web and, and mobile apps and so on, uh, I was very keen to get into that and actually we switched and, and made completely a digital solution. Um, let's say that uh, the thing about uh, making a printed tourist guide actually still stays on, but um, it's a secondary thing to our, to our business. We are shifting towards uh, now much more towards events rather than, uh, rather than places, uh, as Mosquito has been divided into uh, major sections, let's say, as a service. Um, and um, one of the things that uh, I'm pretty proud of, uh, of my team and so on, that uh, during the last year we have pr practically gathered 7,800 events. We have covered 7,800 events in Montenegro and uh, around 2,500 uh, places of interest. So it's a pretty big deal and for those who think that nothing is happening here, uh, this serves to us as a proof that there is actually a lot of stuff going on. It's just too much clustered and we are trying actually to get this uh, in a single, single location. Okay, so it seems to me that you have Montenegro in your back pocket on Mosquito. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans for expansion? Yes, obviously. Um, our idea is to expand uh, as soon as possible. We have been testing uh, quite a bit the, the model of uh, how we could make this scalable. Obviously, uh, other countries have an advantage of uh, having a much better uh, location covered services, which we will attach to, so it's not going to be as difficult uh, work as uh, it has been for Montenegro. But um, yeah, definitely, we are, we are definitely expanding soon. Fa uh, Foursquare is experimenting with events. Do you see it as a potential competitor in the future? I think definitely that they, they are trying. Uh, obviously, they, they are big, uh, much bigger than us, and uh, they have a huge database of, uh, of uh, places. Uh, I think the platform as it is now is not really suited for, for events, uh, which doesn't mean that they won't try to, to make something. With events, there is, a, there is an issue that it requires for the first time for those company who are, uh, companies who are really based on location-based services that rely too much on community input, um, that they need to step down uh, in, the, in public and actually talk to the businesses and so on. So it's going to require a lot of time uh, to actually get a good model about events. And many, many, many big companies are actually experimenting with this. And our idea is to try to make a service that is going to make you be able to organize whichever event you want and uh, to be able to sell it and to pay it uh, via mobile phone, hopefully. So you're not waiting and hoping and praying for PayPal and blaming the government and everybody others, everyone others? No. Uh, obviously, it, it is a difficult situation, uh, especially here with the online payment services and so on. But um, there's no point in, uh, in uh, crying like a baby that 
things are not uh, there yet. Uh, we need to provide services. Um, as soon as those things come, we are ready just to attach them to, to, to our service. Obviously, it's going to be a great plus uh, to have these things also in Montenegro, but as soon as we go and expand to other regions, we need always to think about the payment system that is going to work. We are also exploring possibilities with some mobile operators about this. Okay, you mentioned mobile operators, and there was a question on Facebook from Michele. He asked, how on earth did you get the Telenor deal? Well, um, for, again, for those who don't know, actually this summer uh, we have been uh, partnering with Telenor uh, as our uh, official partner for the summer. Um, let's say that uh, obviously mobile operators as they are, they're a little bit stubborn. But uh, let's say the convincing part was actually that we truly believe in our idea. And um, when you come to Montenegro, you have three operators that are fighting each other how to get the most out of tourists, uh, how to uh, pay that prepaid service that they're offering and what they're offering. They're usually offering only, I don't know, give you minutes or uh, free calls to your relatives in certain countries, uh, stuff like that. So we really think and believe that we do have an added value uh, to the service, which would make the situation a little bit in favor of a certain operator rather than the other. So uh, we uh, partnered with Telenor and they have provided a free access to Mosquito uh, internet traffic uh, during the whole summer and this is continuing. Um, and um, it, it has been a really, really nice collaboration so far. Uh, all the roaming partners uh, actually have pushed to the tourists uh, this information when they came, come in to Montenegro that there is a, a guide that they suggest that they should use. So um, this also uh, has been very nice for us to see how, how things are using, how actually tourists are using the service as well. Uh, there's a question on Twitter. It says, do you own your own maps and what are you going to do with Apple iOS 6 maps now? Is it going to work for you? Well, the thing is uh, about owning our own maps, we do not own our own maps. Uh, we have been... Uh, as volunteers drawing for a while on MapMaker uh, together with all the rest of the mapping community in Montenegro which, which has been thriving for the last couple of years. Uh, what we do not like about Google Maps at the moment is the situation about payments and the situation that we cannot export at least the content that the community made. Um, this is something that uh, will make a switch definitely to something else. Um, as for iOS 6, um, this is for us, it is not a problem um, because we want... But you hate it, right? Uh, sorry? You hate it. Yes, yes. It's, uh, it's, uh, I think it's a very bad, even if you're calling me a, an Apple fanboy, uh, I think it's a very uh, bad move of Apple not to consider small countries and not to understand what is going on in local, in local situations. I have been testing, as I said yesterday, also the iOS uh, six uh, in beta version and uh, basically the maps uh, are in Montenegro are non-existent so um, they have the data that is more than 20 years old and two streets for the whole country. So uh, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a big issue for Foursquare on iOS because definitely they're not going to make an exception for us. Uh, they accept if by some miracle someone uh, makes them to do so. Um, so basically on iOS uh, we are going to have loads of pins at the moment as we do uh, that people have mapped and uh, no map below. So for those who are very concerned about this I wouldn't suggest upgrading to iOS 6 if this is the issue for you. Uh, for our applications we are still relying on external services so we are not hit by this issue. So it can be even an advantage for us at least on the, uh, on the iOS part of the uh, public that is using Foursquare, so definitely it's it's interesting. Okay. Please use your opportunity to ask a true Montenegrin entrepreneur sure. a question. Uh, you mentioned scalability. When you start scaling, you need to hire more programmers and more designers. How hard was it for you in the past to hire new guys in Montenegro? It is still in the present. Uh, it's quite difficult. Um, it's quite difficult for numerous reasons. Uh, 
some of them are require lack of uh, openness to new technologies, to universities not actually covering enough and not pushing those kids uh, to the limits. Uh, I think they need to inspire a little bit more. And I think that mentality a little bit needs to change. Um, I'm not speaking about the developers only. I'm, I'm just speaking actually about people. Yeah, you're basically people. telling that me as a professor is not doing a good job, right? Well, <laughs> I yeah, don't okay. know in your field, but uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not blaming so much professors. I know the conditions uh, they're working in, but uh, I think their job is rather so much to teach, a little bit more to inspire, and to really help those guys reach the stars. And, and, and I think this is the, at least on a university level, this definitely needs to be a job of a teacher, to learn, uh, to teach how to learn, and to teach that there, there are no limits to their ideas, that they can push, they can try, they will fail, and it's great. Uh, they will learn a lot from that. A few months ago, you gave a guest lecture at my class, Technology and Innovation, and you said one sentence that really struck me. You said the job of a teacher is to open up the minds of students. And yes. that really rang a bell with my students. Yes, I think this is the issue. When, uh, as I studied abroad, I studied for uh, two years in Wales uh, among 300,000 sheep and uh, 300 people from 86 uh, countries of the world. And it really has been a great experience. Uh, the teaching method was slightly or uh, greatly different actually from, from what we know now. Then other experiences in the US and so on, what I saw is actually that, that uh, the teachers at the university level at a certain point become facilitators for all those great guys, uh, for all those ideas to develop and they push them to the limits. And this is what their job needs to be. Uh, when uh, I'm not saying uh, that lessons are not important at all. I'm, I'm saying this, uh, obviously curriculum is something that needs to be covered. Uh, but I think in a way that when, when people approach to the companies at the moment, they're not as ready as they should be and as open as they should be. We need material to, to work with. And that means that there are no barriers at the very beginning. We have a question from the big boss. Yeah, Ooh. but you, you just ask what I wanted to ask. So, so it's literally, it was my question. That's but one of my Jedi really minds. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I have another one. What was your first emotion when you saw Harry Potter movie? First emotion when I saw Harry Potter movie? I, I came back to my high school. My high school uh, kitchen and basically the place where we ate, uh, all 300 and something of us from 86 countries, was the same as, as <laughs> Harry Potter setting. Basically, we had these tables that are 16 meters long with all these people and everything. We, we basically uh, were eating in a, in a castle uh, from 12th century. So, yeah, it has been really, really strange. And also some of the lessons, history and so on, where you would need to go with these small stairs and obviously people were smaller in the mid, uh, medieval ages. So you would need like, especially, I'm, I'm not one of the tall guys in Montenegro definitely, but we were like going up with, the, with our heads down and so on. It, it's really great, yeah. One more question, Ivan. Yeah, okay, I have I'll give small. you back your computer. No, don't, don't <laughs> worry, everything's fine. And the question is, I didn't catch beginning, I had to go out, but, uh, uh, how many people work with you? Uh, at the moment, we are in nine. Um, can you shout? There should be there. They're silent and shy, but yeah. <laughs> this is the team that is making dreams come true. And definitely, I would never be able to go this far without them. Uh, I think that basis of every business, of every endeavor that one uh, hops onto, is, is actually about the team. Thank you. Welcome. We really need a question from the Fleca guys, so please approach the mic and ask a provo provocative question to your CEO, please. <laughs> it's your chance to grill him now. They received the memo this morning about <laughs> this thing. <laughs> uh, why do you think young people aren't starting more things here? I don't mean just businesses, I mean, NGOs,
blogs, newspapers, parties, whatever. So just start something in your life. A tough one. Um, okay, first of all, I think that there is a problem of, of uh, Mediterranean countries in a way of the relation between <laughs> children and moms. I think that we need to a little bit separate from this and uh, if you have a possibility to leave your city to study, uh, it is definitely something that, w that what you should do. Uh, even though if it's a slightly worse university, don't stay in your town. You need experiences away from your home, from uh, the safety net that you have at all times and, and a warm meal by your mom. And uh, it needs to be something uh, that, that uh, will be the first thing that, that starts you going. Second thing, you need guts, and this is something that uh, that needs to be there. Uh, that needs to be there, and uh, you need to believe. And you don't need to uh, get into a situation where you have a corporate sector that is hiring, and that your only goal in life is to get the full-time job there, uh, because the situation in the country is as such. Uh, it is, I think, the excuse, the worst excuse one can make, uh, because everybody is pretty much good on saying bad things about other things, uh, but not so much on, on doing something on their own. There is a big, uh, I think, possibility for, for Montenegro and for young Montenegrins uh, to, to do something. It just requires us to change a little bit the way we perceive the world and start traveling. Visa is not the issue anymore. Even if you're going somewhere very close to here, I think it's a very important experience to do. Um, also discovered this country as well. I have many, many people who haven't visited even 20% of this country, which is tiny, and uh, I think it's a shame. It opens up your head and gives you a different perspective and gives you some ideas. Okay, there's a question on Twitter about the way you started Mosquito. So let's try and go back in your mind in the first 10 minutes when the idea of Mosquito was born. Could you describe that Big Bang moment? Well, the thing is that uh, when the first, first idea uh, struck us in Mosquito, I was in Milan with Giuseppe, my partner, and uh, we were just walking down the street, and we were actually trying to find something, and there was no Foursquare at the time, and uh, we thought that it would be really great for those people who are not from the, from the place to know how to move in a certain area. And uh, as a foreigner, being in Milan, obviously um, it gives you a different perspective on a different country, different mentality, and uh, getting acquainted with, with everything that is there. So, um, yeah, we believed that it was something great to do. At the time, we were too small to, to, to do something of this kind, and obviously some other services started up, uh, but it was at the very beginning perceived as a, as a fully uh, location-based service and only for locations. But then we shifted towards events because we thought it's, a, it's, a, it's something really worth exploring and it still is a hot issue actually, ticketing and all these things. Okay, by the way, my mom just called and she said, please don't listen to that evil guy. <laughs> okay, I think I need to Are you looking for investors? Um, we are exploring the possibilities. Uh, we definitely are open to, to discussion about these things. Uh, discussion means? Discussion means uh, see what we have on the table to put uh, both sides. I have a lot of money on the table, so... Okay, we'll talk later. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm absolutely open to investments. I think that uh, definitely... Uh, there are things that need to detach. Uh, obviously, Fleca is planning on um, on detaching Mosquito as a separate company, and we have in plan a couple of other startups that we want to do. So, um, definitely, it, it is something that we would do. We would do it with Mosquito. We wouldn't do it with Fleca. It's pretty much that kind of uh, approach, uh, because I think it, Mosquito is pretty much arriving at the moment to be separated as, as, a, as a separate company. So does this mean that Mosquito is up for grabs? You are telling us that you're actively looking for investors or strategic partners? It can be so. We have some room, some okay. guys in the room, believe me. It can be so, yeah. Okay, another question. Works. Uh, question and one, uh, I forgot before to ask. Did you have any project that failed? 
or yes, it was not course. profitable and you had to kill it? Of course, of course. We had uh, wrong timing is one of the things that uh, usually when you have a good idea is, uh, is something that uh, needs to be planned in a way. Uh, when we were uh, still in school, uh, school saying college actually, university, um, we had this idea that was called Pix to Mix, and uh, basically it was a picture sharing service. There was no Flickr at the time, and uh, we were like for three, four months developing this thing, and then Flickr came out, and we were like uh, just too late with uh, with stuff like that. There were other things that we did as well that failed, and uh, from every failure, I think we learned the lesson. Uh, we made other failures as well. I mean, er errors more than failures. But uh, if you learn from it, I think it's, it's good, as long as you do not repeat these errors. Thanks. Okay, a, qu a question on Twitter. Why is the Mosquito app for Android so buggy? You uh, did it on purpose. Yeah. No. Uh, our, our interest is actually to, to make applications on both platforms equally stable. Um, for us, Android department has been a challenging issue. I mean, Android is a platform, uh, but we, I, can, I can announce that we are actually completely changing this, the way we are doing uh, the apps. Uh, we have relied a lot of H on HTML5, and um, as Facebook failed with their apps, actually, we, uh, and redone them in a different manner, I think we, we got to the point when we are actually doing pretty much the same, uh, now doing completely, not hybrid, but uh, native apps. I think that obviously uh, for those who are involved, uh, applications that are not so complex do not have these issues, but uh, as the service is growing and so on, I really believe that uh, it's still, it's still uh, early to go into fully, fully HTML stuff. One last chance for the final question. Okay, so what's next step for Flecka? Next step for Flecka. Okay, we are working on... Uh, and feel free to give us a world exclusive information. The guys there are blogging, so... Mm. Uh, the f let's say that uh, we are preparing some projects that I cannot speak of at the moment. Ah, but, come on, uh, man, give me a break. We're doing something are about the community we are opening up uh, and uh, we definitely want to engage more users to, to do stuff with, uh, with the stuff we do. So we have done quite a bit of job uh, of work actually with collaborators who were going physically to the places, interviewing uh, the, the places, uh, restaurants, museums and so on, getting all this data. We want to make that at certain point public and see what obviously uh, people can do with their creativity. We don't want to stop this and to keep this as a, as a fully proprietary data. Obviously, we want to take credit for that, but uh, for us it is, uh, it is time for Flecka to open up its doors. We are uh, at the beginnings of talkings uh, with uh, some of the guys from the main and so on to open up some sort of laboratories with, uh, that we would gather people who uh, want to do cool stuff and give them support. I think that at the moment we have, especially in Podgorica, we have um, many universities who do not speak to each other uh, with different... No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with different professions. Uh, people are being taught how to do marketing, people are being taught how to develop, and there are people who are being taught how to design. And there is no communication between them. And it's a, it's a pity. So it needs to be, since it's not happening for a while now, it needs to be an external thing that will gather them together and start to create these teams because not everyone is good at everything. And this is also a very important issue to, to stress. So uh, it is good that you mix uh, different backgrounds, different experiences, and uh, try. Try to do something to make something yours because making something yours is the best gift that you can have in life, definitely. So, does it really matter that you're an engineer, designer, or an economist for the rest of your career? I don't think so. I think that you need to be surrounded by good people, to be surrounded by a good team, to have an idea 
and to believe in that idea. I think that's the, the most important thing to, to have. Uh, it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm coming from a visual background, I'm not a developer. Um, I know uh, to read, to see loads of things, but I'm definitely not from that field. Uh, there are people who do that. It's important that you find a good mixture in a team, uh, and obviously there will be difficult and different experiences, but try them, try them, definitely it's, it's worth trying. When you know that you have failed, you learn something. Maybe you switch completely to a different industry, but uh, start growing crops, uh, organic food in Montenegro, there is, a, I think, pretty good uh, possibility for growing uh, business in this event, or I'm coming from a different, different field. Uh, but uh, just try. I think that the, I haven't seen in Montenegro so much trying, and we as Flecker need competitors. We need creative competitors who will make us rush and, and make new things and compete because it's, it's just boring at the moment. They are not letting you go off so easily, Mili Begovic. Good morning. Um, hi, I'm asking a question about something that you have already talked about, so I hope that's okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what do tourists like to do the most based on the application that you've done with uh, Promonte? From what we have seen, from those who are sp coming from the um, more or less same speaking uh, background. Uh, they like to explore events much more. Uh, obviously, those who are coming from a different uh, language background, they, and if they're staying for a short amount of time, they're more focused on places. Uh, they want to explore, obviously, things to see, monuments, best of, they want to eat good food. Um, if on the way they get the possibility to party, it is something that they will do. Uh, obviously, it's also it, it's diversified uh, based on, on, a, on an age uh, uh, target. There are Italians who come in and they spend all their summer in Top Hill. Uh, you have other people who do some other stuff. So, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it, it, it's diversified. And, and uh, there is a lot of services, I think, that are required to, um, to actually meet the need of these trees. And I would compliment you because I know that you're working on a Foursquare project for Montenegro for the north. And uh, I think it's a, it's a great, great thing and we need more of these things, okay. definitely. Just one more question. Anything on the geographic uh, uh, aggregation, north, south, central? Sorry? Uh, anything on the ge geography of uh, your users? Do they flock more to the south, to the north, center? Uh, at the moment, they flock more to the south, and this is due to the, our touristic, tourist offer of the country that is being forced by the, by the, by the government itself. Um, so they do not have enough information about the north, and therefore, they, they, they see what they have. Uh, also with operators, uh, when we started this season, uh, in their mind, the first thing was like, cover the south. Because, you know, it, it's the most important thing. Then we will talk about the rest. So, yeah. Thank you. Th you're welcome. Okay, so Masha is yelling at me that we need to get off the stage. Ooh. So before, before we do just wrap up the session, there was a lot of comments on Twitter saying that thank God there was somebody who mentioned education for the first day and a half of WebFest, so thank you. And to sum it up, there are three takeaways. So first, learn, second, travel, and third, grow some balls. Yes, definitely, especially the third one. Okay, thank you, man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.